uh, today I am going to be doing a simple sort of uh, twist and curl. Um, so yeah, let's get to it. So I am starting off on freshly washed hair. Um, it's been sort of air drying um, for probably about an hour. I use the Cantu Avocado uh, shampoo and conditioner. And so I'm just going to go in behind that with my Cantu Avocado leave-in conditioner and then uh, seal that with uh, some olive oil. Okay, I've got my spray bottle handy and for the twist part I'm going to be using um, a trial packet of the Myel Pomegranate and Honey Twisting Souffle. So I have used uh, this product uh, before but not for a twist and curl and then for the curl part I'm just going to be using these purplish pink uh, rods. So yeah and um, so right now my hair is in uh, two sections but uh, when I actually go to um, start these twists I'm going to go ahead and section it even further so I'm just going to go ahead and uh, take these out because I don't want the, I want the center part in the middle of my head in the front, but not in the back. Uh, so I'm actually going to end up, uh, I think, taking these into uh, maybe three sections. So I'm just going to kind of work with them that way. And I'm not doing any uh, particular parting other than that very front middle part which I had already kind of sectioned um, in the shower Alrighty. so my hair is still um, nicely damp uh, but not uh, dripping wet so I think that's good um, I am going to go ahead and I think section it back into two sections while I put the leave-in conditioner uh, because that's just my preference. Okay, so I'm just going to work that in. And get all of those strands nicely coated and because I detangled my hair a bit in the shower I don't have to do as much but I do a combination of both finger detangling and then I also go in with my brush um, I found this brush I think maybe at Myers or possibly even one of our local uh, hair shops. Um, so it's not the you know expensive kind that you probably get like on Amazon or anything like that. Um, but it does, I think, the same job. I know some people complained about the one expensive brush having a handle that was not comfortable. This handle is very comfortable. It is uh, a brush that is very easy to use. It's also very easy to clean, which I like. And so then, as I said, I'm just going to follow that up with my oil. Just a little bit of that. And then once I have the back section with the leave-in and oil, I will go ahead and begin the twisting process for that. And then I'm just going to basically go uh, section by section with my leave-in, my oil, and then the twisting souffle uh, and kind of just go that way rather than uh, putting the leave-in all over. Um, okay, so that's good for that one. Let's go ahead and do this one. I'm just going to take that clip over here to get it out of the way. So 
I'm putting probably about, I don't know, a quarter size or something. Um, maybe a little over through each section, trying to get my ends really well because my hair gets very dry. It sucks up moisture. And uh, so, yeah. Now, I should tell you guys that I'm not a hairstylist. That's not what I do uh, by trade. And so, I don't use necessarily all the right technical terms or anything, um, no more than what I've probably seen on YouTube. Also, I am a lazy natural, so something to know about me, and um, I kind of fell into being a natural, um, and so I'll share that story in another video, but um, yeah, it wasn't like by choice that I said, oh yeah, I'm going to, you know, just go natural and, you know, it was kind of more like uh, my daughter at the time was starting school and um, she has, you know, thick hair and it was getting longer and doing her hair and my hair uh, just didn't really, it wasn't going well. And so, um, I was like, okay, I need to not be doing my hair as much meant meaning flat ironing, uh, drawing all that every day. Little did I know how much work really goes into being a natural. So, yeah. Um, so when I actually first went natural, I probably wasn't doing you know the right things for my hair, and probably even to this day, I'm not doing the right things for my hair. So as a part of my ongoing journey i am actually trying to get my hair back to its full thickness my hair um, even when relaxed was thick and as i've gotten older um, as you guys can see i'm i'm gray by nature um, i actually was born with this uh, gray streak right here that's in the middle but um, as you can see it's starting to come in elsewhere and so as of Probably late last year, I finally made the decision to just let it go natural, uh, naturally gray all over and not color any longer. I had my last color last year. That was a disaster in terms of the hairstyle. I'll share that one as well in another video. Um, but I decided to not color my hair any longer. And so as I've gotten older, um, on medication things like that my gray is coming in my hair just isn't responding quite the same as it used to so for any of you graying gals out there if you notice that your hair is maybe thinning or not responding to products in the same way um, you know just comment down below uh, also as a part of this journey with YouTube I guess I am um, still trying to figure this out I'm still trying to figure out what it's going to be like being gray with natural hair. Um, I don't really have any intention of going back to a relaxer, although I must admit every now and then I do, you know, think about what would it be like to be gray with relaxed hair, but I don't foresee myself going down that route. Um, I think a lot, uh, I think about different styles. I've actually at one point thought about uh, getting it locked. Um, but again, I don't, I don't foresee myself doing that at this time in my life. So I think natural it is for me. So we're just going to have to figure it out. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, continue this. I did say that I was going to not put the leave-in and then the oil in, but I guess since I've kind of already started doing that, I'll just do that uh, for each section. And then I'm trying to get these edges also because my edges are really thin right through here. Um, I'm just going to finish this up.
so I've got uh, the leave-in and oil um, in and as I said I'm going to do this uh, back section a little bit different than I normally do um, rather than leaving it in the two sections I'm going to go ahead and combine these and maybe put three across because I don't want that uh, middle part in the back of my head uh, so I'm going to just kind of comb that out Just going to okay, sort of finger separate. I don't really care about these parts being uh, straight or anything like that because, as I said, this is going to be a kind of a twist and curl. And for me, I actually like it best when my hair is kind of full and big. Um, so I'm okay if the roots you know are a little puffy um, so as I said I'm going in with the Myel Twist uh, Souffle um, I have used this uh, product before uh, but as I said never for a twist and curl I think it was just kind of a twist out or braid out um, Go ahead and apply that all through this section here. Maybe follow it up with a like a this is what happens when you're a, a lazy natural. You gotta be careful about snagging your hair. So going in and twisting. Now I'm not going to twist all the way down. I'm probably going to twist maybe uh, two thirds of the way down. Yeah, I think that's probably good. And then I'm just going to smooth out. Now here is where I am actually not the best because I'm not a okay let's see how I want to do this you know what maybe I'll start from the bottom because I'm not a hairstylist I'm not necessarily the best at putting my hair on the rod so that it falls the way that I want it to. So we're going to see. Okay. Just going to clip that one out of the way. Do a little bit of the product. So one of the reasons that I wanted my hair to not be completely soaking wet is that I am going to let this air dry. I don't do a lot of heat styling. Um, in fact, the last time I had heat on my hair was maybe a few days ago and before that it had been a year and the only reason I had uh, used a dryer is because I look at me I'm not even paying attention to what I'm doing I said twist not just a rod set see this is this is how you <laughs> so as you can see I'm not a professional youtuber but I play one on TV now, um, I can definitely be forgetful sometimes. And then I'm like, oh, what was I doing? <laughs> yeah.
because I also, you know, want a little bit of elongation. I'm not really trying to, no, I don't think that one, I don't think that one went quite the way I wanted it to. I'm wondering why this one is hanging low. Well, I don't think I'm getting this on the rod the way I wanted it to. Or maybe I'm not rolling it up as much as I did the other one. There we go. Nope. Third time, fourth time's a charm, right? this much trouble getting my hair on the rod. I don't know what I'm what I'm doing today different than any other time that I've used my rods, but we're gonna go with it, okay? We're gonna go with it. Cause I don't wanna be all day. So one of the things I'm trying to do as I'm twisting is just making sure I'm getting a nice tight twist so I can get it as defined as possible. It is very humid right now where I'm at and so as I was saying earlier I don't use a lot of heat. And certainly I didn't want to sit under a dryer today, so I'm just going to let these air dry. Um, probably for the day, maybe even overnight. And then I'll come back and take them down. So uh, this back section is going to be a little more difficult. So I think what I'm going to end up doing is just finishing the back section off of camera. Um, I'll come back when I'm doing the sides so that you guys can get a better view because I don't generally turn around when I do my hair. And so um, I'm just going to go ahead and finish the back section off of camera, come back and let you see me doing the sides. All right. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get started with the uh, side sections. Um, they're still a little bit damp, so um, I think what I'm going to do is uh, just give it a light spray. Work that in. Go ahead and just take it off a little bit more. And then, so I think what I'm going to do is just begin to section these off a little bit. As again, nothing uh, too serious because I don't care about really the parts. Of the twist. I don't want these twists to be too small though. Uh, so I should show you the uh, back. This is what the back ended up uh, kind of looking like. Um, as I said, this was kind of the first time that I've done it where I didn't have to center part down the uh, back.
And so just working the product in. so much is how to keep it like I said moisturized and um, getting back to the thickness um, but the two things that I've always kind of struggled with um, with my hair is that my hair is different textures in the back than it is in the front so the curl pattern is different 
Um, also, because I have a widow's peak, styling my hair has always kind of been a challenge because my hair doesn't lay quite the same way uh, when I try a style, uh, you know, maybe that I'm trying to copy or see uh, from another YouTuber or, you know, somebody that I've seen kind of, you know, just in my community. And, you know, so when I try and replicate that style it doesn't quite come out the same way and that's just because of the shape of my hair so what you'll notice is that my widow's peak kind of comes down here and then it makes sort of a heart shape up but you know it goes right up um and so <coughs> excuse me that has been i think one of my biggest challenges any time I've tried to style my hair, whether it's been um, as a relaxed person or a natural. Um, and there I go dropping product on the floor. So I am notorious for the dropsies. So sometimes the challenge is when to incorporate the hair that's in the front and when to sort of, you know, do it separately. Um, and so in this case, what I'm going to do is just incorporate it into a larger twist because I know that if I leave it separate, it's going to look even stringier because, as I said, my curl pattern in the front is looser than in the back. And so my hair does uh, tend to hang down more. So that's this side and now we're going to just go ahead and finish uh, this side so again I may go ahead and just do this off camera and then let you guys see um, what it you know is like uh, once I get everything kind of in so yeah I'll be back okay so here we have the whole head completed and with the rod and so what we're going to do is just uh, air dry these uh, for um, some hours uh, maybe possibly for the day and then um, I will come back and take them down and let you see the takedown process okay so as you guys can see um, it's the same day it's later in the day and I kind of just decided that um, I did not want to uh, sleep in these and wait a whole night so we're just going to go ahead and take them down and uh, see what happens but I do believe they're all uh, dry uh, the hair does feel nice and moisturized so yeah so we're just going to go ahead and take these down and yeah we'll see what happens and I will try and be more gentle than I normally am in taking them down. I think I used about, I think maybe about 20, maybe 21 rods in total. I did fix that one that was hanging really low in the back. Um, I think it was just the angle uh, that I was coming at it from. So, yeah.
always that one hanging out in the back right alrighty so this is what they are looking like and again they feel pretty dry so um, that's about um, seven maybe six or seven hours um, of drying time air drying time uh, no heat drying uh, so we're going to see what they feel like once I start to separate them I wonder if I went a little too far down in my twist sometimes too because I always feel like when I see other people separating their curl and their twist uh, that they're able to locate the perfect place quite easily and I don't feel like I'm doing that so I'm wondering too. So if you guys have thoughts on that, I'm okay with you leaving that comment down below. Uh, as you watch this video, did it seem like I, you know, twisted too far down in order to get a good separation? I will say this, my hair is coming out probably better than it's ever come out before. So. The Myel might be a new thing for me. It might become a new staple. Um, I don't think I have had this much definition in my curl or the twist part with my other products. Also, if you have product ideas that I should try, while well, I have my staples, I am open to suggestions of things to try. Um, if you have something that you feel has been healthy for your hair. Please let me know and then perhaps as I'm developing content for my channel, I will be able to add those products and see how they work for me um, I know if I'm going to try a product I'm going to give it a good try meaning I'm going to use it for a bit of time like a month um, before I can really say okay yes this is something that I you know would want to keep um, and that's me not being gentle and careful because I don't want to start separating more but oh my goodness I am yeah I'm just really amazed at how defined even the curl is and like I said I know I'm not the best at my takedown but um, yeah so separating again is one of those weird kind of things for me so usually I just try and separate very gently and where it sort of naturally wants to but at the same time So we're just going to continue separating these curls gently.
Now I will say um, something that I realized that I didn't do and maybe it's because I'm not used to my hair being quite this uh, moisturized so I didn't really uh, think about it which is to uh, put oil on my hand so I just did that because uh, I really shouldn't be separating these without the uh, oil. I know that's just going to contribute to a frizz at the end which I really don't want. sections and yeah that's what I was afraid of but we're gonna just go with it okay so I feel like the uh, separating maybe because I'm not used to being so uh, careful and slow is going to take a long time what I'm going to do is just pause and then I will uh, show you guys the final result um, of the takedown or separation. So here is the sort of final look um, after separating. Um, so I'm just trying to go in and fluff it a little bit. Um, I want to keep that definition. I am, I have never had my curls look like this ever uh, the Maya will definitely be joining the ranks of products that I keep um, I have never ever achieved curls like this I am I'm super psyched first of all I love the fact that I have the curls but I also have the um, elongation of the curls uh, so yeah, um, I am, I'm liking it, okay? Um, I'm almost afraid to uh, touch it too much for fear that I'm going to mess it up. Uh, yes, I have some frizz for sure, um, but again, that's on me. That's not on the product. Uh, that's on my technique and takedown, and I think as I, if I can continue to achieve this type of uh, look and result, um, I am definitely going to get better, I think, over time with using this. So, okay. So, we'll see. Um, I'll give you my thoughts on it maybe in a few days as I've uh, lived with it to see how moisturized does it stay. But right now, my hair feels good and my curls look amazing so okay you guys well this is the final look um as i get better and better at this i'll you know pull something nice on and maybe put a little lipstick on but for now i'm satisfied i am definitely satisfied Alrighty, you guys, again, thanks for watching my channel. Again, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification button for when I post up new content. You'll be notified and you can join me in the Midwest. So, again, welcome to Miss Laylee in the Midwest, just being me. This is the next day morning after sleeping on it with my satin bonnet. So again, I'm still really impressed with the definition of the curls. They held up even though they're, it's a very light uh, hold, um, but they they held up. Uh, they came back to life after they were a little bit flat, but um, all I had to do was just kind of shake it out with my hands. And so this is the uh, result the next morning. So. Again, thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe and the like button as well as the notification.